So for most people who start a fat loss plan or even a muscle building plan, one of the first things that they discover is that they're either eating way too much protein or more than likely not eating nearly enough protein. So one of the things we work on with our clients is finding creative ways to easily hit their protein goal day in and day out without feeling like it's a complete chore. So the first step that we always start with whenever it comes to trying to eat more protein is building out your meals around your protein source. A lot of people put together dinner ideas or lunch ideas and they pull things in that are carb heavy or fat heavy and then protein's kind of the last thing they throw in there. Like they'll make this huge salad and be like, oh, what should we put in on top so we hit our protein goal? I would suggest the opposite. I would suggest starting your meal plan with figuring out what your protein source is gonna be. And I always use the pasta example. Most people make delicious pasta using some kind of spaghetti or noodles with some kind of sauce. And then last minute they go, oh, maybe we should put some like meatballs in or something. What I suggest is starting with a healthy protein source like turkey meatballs or lean ground beef and starting with how much you wanna include in your dish and then building around there. So you would have that as your protein source and then you bring in your carbs and fats to round out the meal. That's tip number one. So an easy way to increase your protein is just simply eating more protein. Now I know this might seem like common sense but most people forget about this one. If you're currently eating, let's say, three ounces of chicken at lunch, a simple way to increase your total protein for the day is eating four, five, or six ounces. The good news is that this isn't hard. All you have to do is add more of that protein source at each meal. It doesn't require you to eat more meals or more snacks or more protein shakes. It's just eating more protein at that specific meal. So take a look at your current meals. Even if you're planning your meals around your protein source, make sure the amounts are helping you sufficiently hit your goal for the day. That way you don't get to the end of the day and have to play catch up, force feeding yourself protein, going to bed with a massive stomach ache, and just being stressed out about protein. That's no way to live. So tip number three, you knew this was coming. Once again, probably one you've heard before, probably one you've thought of before, but I just wanna reiterate how important it is to have a high quality protein powder on stock in your kitchen or wherever you are so that you don't ever have to go without protein. You can always throw this in a blender or a shaker cup, mix it with water, almond milk, oat milk, whatever your preference, and you have a high protein shake anytime, anywhere. Now, I'm not sponsored by these guys, but I do love this protein powder. This is not a advertisement, so YouTube, please keep this video up. This is BPN protein. I love the chocolate peanut butter flavor. This is just one of my go-tos, one of my all-time favorite brands. Shout out to Nick Bear who runs this company. Once again, not sponsored, but I just wanted to share something with you that I enjoy uh, that uh, we use daily both in our protein shakes and in recipes that we build, which we'll get to here in a second. So that is tip number three. Always have a high quality protein powder ready to go. Okay, so tip number four is Greek yogurt, one of the most forgotten snacks that you can keep in the house. Not to mention one of the easiest ways to add protein to your meals. Greek yogurt by itself is a tremendous snack. You can throw toppings in it before bed if you wanna have dessert, something like that. But Greek yogurt's awesome to have also for things like sauce or toppings. It's a great replacement for sour cream on tacos or wherever you put that stuff. Ultimately, Greek yogurt can be used in a variety of ways. We use it all the time when we use baking recipes. Like if you're putting together a high protein cheesecake or just anything that involves baking that involves having some kind of liquid calories, Greek yogurt can add protein to the mix. You can also throw it in your protein shakes as a boost for both taste, texture, and obviously protein. So always have some Greek yogurt. I suggest these Greek yogurt Dan and Light and Fit snacks if you're just looking for a snack option or just buying a nice big tub of non-fat Greek yogurt to use for recipes, additions to your shake, or whatever you may use it for in terms of toppings. So Greek yogurt, awesome to have, make sure you grab it. Now tip number five, and I'm giving you a little bit of a bonus tip here and I'm gonna explain why, because peanut butter, one of our all time favorites is the classic, peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter on apples, peanut butter just by the spoonful, who doesn't love peanut butter, right? So. When you're on a diet, you're trying to lose fat, peanut butter can wreck your calories. It's so easy to overeat. So one thing I always recommend to have on tap is PB2. It's a powdered peanut butter that can be mixed with water and can create a paste-like substance that looks and performs just like peanut butter. Doesn't taste exactly like peanut butter, but it's pretty darn close. The cool thing about this stuff, it's got a ton of protein. Two spoonfuls of this is six grams of protein. So you start mixing this up, you're not gonna get a ton of calories like, pro, like peanut butter, you're just gonna be adding a bunch of protein and getting that nice peanut butter taste that we all crave so much. So make sure you go grab some PB2. Now this isn't the only 
peanut butter powder out there. I'm not sponsored by them or I'm not associated with them, but there's other brands. You can check them out as well. Just make sure you check out the calories. Make sure it's around 60 to 50 calories per serving and at least six grams of protein as well. So grab some powder peanut butter. It works. It's a great addition to have. Tip number six, you guessed it, more protein bars. Now, be careful with protein bars. There's a ton out there that are basically a Snickers bar disguised as a protein bar. Tons of sugar, not a lot of protein, tons of additives, tons of processed stuff. Be careful. I like Quest Nutrition. They're a reliable company. They've been around for a while. I tested out their new, got it upside down, of course, tested out their new crunchy protein bars. Once again, not sponsored, just using or showing you what I use personally so you get the real deal. This doesn't have a ton of protein, only 10 grams, but it gets the job done if I'm in a pinch and I don't wanna go grab something that's gonna destroy my calories for the day and not give me any protein. There are protein bars out there. I think their normal protein bars have about 20 grams of protein. So you can check them out if you're looking for a little bit more. Uh, but ultimately, it's all about having things on hand that add to your protein intake for the day without destroying your calories and don't tempt you to go drive to Wendy's or McDonald's and pick up something that's high in calories, high in fat, high in carbs, but doesn't give you a lot of protein. I suggest keeping protein bars around the house or your workplace or even your car, just not on a hot day because they'll probably melt and that sucks. So make sure you have protein bars on hand. It's just another tip. Tip number six, as we head to our last tip to help you easily hit your protein goal. All right, tip number seven is all about how much protein you actually need. There's a huge misconception out there that you need to eat massive amounts of protein. And I wanna end this video with just reassurance that you don't need to eat tons and tons of protein. For many years, there was this whole myth that you had to eat 200, 300, 400, 500 grams of protein a day to build muscle. And that was really just a sales pitch, a sales pitch to help you buy more protein powder, right? If you had to eat all this protein, the only way to get all that in is protein powder. So companies would tell you you have to eat all that, and obviously sell more protein powder, which takes money out of your pocket and also stresses you the heck out. So instead of worrying about all that protein, focus on one gram per day per pound of goal body weight. So if I weigh 250 pounds and I would rather be 200 pounds, just try to get around 200. Now, I give our clients a window. I say just be within 10 to 15% of that target every day. So roughly anywhere between 175 grams and 200 grams a day for that person who's pretty got big person, you're good to go. Don't worry about trying to go crazy eating 300 grams of protein. I know there are people out there still pushing that, but it's not gonna do you any good. It's not gonna help. It's just gonna stress you out and ultimately not leave enough calories for the good stuff, the carbs, and the fats. So without further ado, that is seven easy steps to help you hit your protein goal. We will be following this up with seven more easy steps on one of our next videos, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, if you've made it this far of the video, smash the like button. Leave a comment below. Let me know what your favorite protein source is. And until next time, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Talk to you soon. Josiah Novak, thetruetransformation.com. Peace.